Well, you can't blame me. It's your fault. You wanted to see my template. And it's pretty complicated. So if you're ready, fasten your seatbelts and let's go. Well, this is one of my templates. I have several for different purposes, for mixing acoustic music, for orchestration, for songwriting, etc. But this is the template I use most of the time when I'm mixing pop and rock music. It changes all the time a little bit, but the main structure of my template have been consistent for a few years. And that's what I want to show you in this video. It's pretty complicated, as you will see. It looks like this when you open it up. I have a lot of buses and uh, reverbs and such, but no tracks. And I will come to that. Let me tell you first about the structure, the hierarchy of my template. It starts, of course, with tracks. Recorded tracks of instruments, vocals, software instruments, etc. They could sometimes go via a bus. Terminology is my terminology, is how I see it. I come from a live mixing console thinking. That's why I call it certain ways. What you call it, what colors you use, it's up to you, of course. The bus could be when an instrument is mic'd with several mics, or could be a stereo instrument that is delivered to me on different tracks. So we have left and right, then I combine the left and right to a bus so I can treat it with the same plugin. The tracks that don't go via a bus and the buses are then combined into a sub. Sub is the combining track for an instrument group, like drums, like guitars, like keyboards. And all tracks and subs also have two sends on them, to two reverbs in each group but they are not combined in the sub. The reverb and the sub then goes to a stem. A stem is sort of a track for a bigger group of instruments, all the drums and percussion into one stem, all the guitars, if it's electric guitars or acoustic guitars, into one stem and so on. It's not over there because I have parallel sends from the stems before I combine everything to the master bus. And the master is combining all tracks in the mix. Now let's look at my template and see how it looks like. This is what I'm faced with when I open my template. It's a lot of buses, a lot of subs. Most of them are muted because when I import tracks and I assign the tracks to my buses and subs, I don't want to hear them when I press play because then I know that I have assigned all the tracks. So we have drums, we have electric drums, special that's like sweeps and bombs and things, percussion, bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keyboard, synths, orchestra, that could be strings, could be horns or something, lead one, lead two, and then a bunch of background vocals and choirs. Then I have a few reverbs and delays for my vocals. And also I have some stereo buses already ready to go. For example, if I have uh, electric guitars that should be in stereo, I could just combine them into stereo electric guitar one. And I have a bus for those so I can treat them as one instrument when they are in stereo, even though it's two tracks. Then we have the stems, the parallels, and the master. That's my template, but it's much easier to see when we open the mixer, so let's do that. And I want to go through the drums. As you can see, by the way, no plugins are engaged on the buses. The plugins, of course, I can change if the tracks need something other than I have applied on the buses, but these are some go-to plugins I often use for my tracks. So we have a bass drum bus. Here I combine the different bass drum microphones in a recording. Often the bass drum is recorded with two microphones, one on the inside and one on the outside, and then I combine that into this bass drum bus. Same for the snares, same for the toms, overhead, room one and room two. I also have a fake room, which is sends from the other tracks, from the other buses, that goes into this UAD uh, Ocean Way Studios plugin. If I don't have a room mics that sounds good, or if I don't have room mics at all, I can sort of fake the room with this a bit. 
All those tracks are then combined into my drums sub, which I have here. There are also parallels, compressors and distortions that are sent from my buses into a bass and snare drum parallel compressor. We have an all drum compressor and we have an all drum distortion. And I have sense from my buses to those parallels so I can change the level. Maybe I don't want so much overhead in my distortion, for example. I also have sense for two reverbs. None of them are engaged from the beginning. For the drums, I have a room reverb and a plate reverb. Those go then into uh, my drum stems. All of those parallels and the drum sub goes into drum stem. Here are a few plugins that actually are on from the beginning in my template. First, we have this console from Analog Obsession, which just make a little bit of analog console feeling. And then I have this BX Master Desk from Plugin Alliance. This mainly lowers my signal with six decibels because I don't want to overload my master track. So I can have more fader on each track because this lowers the signal. Then I have a couple of sends from my drum stems to a drum parallel compressor and also an all parallel compressor. And then I combine that into my master bus what you will call it, master sub, master track, whatever. Let me explain that a little more easily using pictures instead of the logic mixer. Here we have a drum kit. How, this is how a drum kit could look like when I receive it. We have a bass drum in microphone, bass drum out, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, three, no, two toms, overhead left and right, room left and right, and a crush mic, a mic that you can put wherever if you want it. Those tracks go via some buses. Not all of the tracks, not the crush mic and not the hi-hat, they go directly to the drum sub. But also every bus and track are going to sense for the reverbs. And then we have some parallels, parallel compressors and stuff on the drums, which then are combined into the stem and then the final master. I hope that was a little bit easier to see. Let's look at the logic mixer again and I will show you how it looks for the rest of the groups because they are not as complicated. So when we go to the electric drums part, this is like synth drums. I only have electric bass drum, electric snare drum and then uh, a sub for the electric drums. I also have a couple of parallels for the electric drums and one reverb because electric drums I often use reverbs directly on the track. Then we have percussion. Percussion looks like this. Nothing special about that either. We have a sub where all the percussion instruments are going through and two reverbs, one short and one long. All the instrument groups in my template looks like this, except for the vocals. So let me show you the vocals. We start with the lead vocal because that is uh, a little bit complicated. So the lead vocal track, I don't use plugins on my lead vocal track except for tuning. If I use Melodyne or Autotune or something, I put that on my vocal track. Then I send it to a lead bus where I have a few plugins ready to go. An EQ, a de and a compressor. That have a parallel compressor with a more aggressive compressor if I want it. They are then combined to a lead sub where I have a multiband compressor, a channel strip and sugar from Process Audio. Often I want to have some air in the vocals and the sugar is excellent for that. Here is where I send to my reverbs. This is the track I, I automate volume and things. I don't do that on the other tracks. Maybe if I want to take out breathing, I do it on the vocal track itself. Otherwise, volume, I use the lead sub for that. It has a lot of sense. First of all, the lead vocals have sense for only the lead vocal. 
We have a slap, wide and throw. Slap is a slap delay. Wide is sort of a chorus that makes the vocal wider. It's not a chorus. It's, it's pitch shift and delay left and right a little bit so I can have the vocal a little bit wider in the mix. And the lead throw is a delay I can use on certain words if I want to delay tail on certain phrases. Then I have also some reverbs and delays sends for my vocals. And these are the same for all the vocal tracks, including background vocals. Office, a very short reverb. Room, well, yeah, room. Short plate, long plate, hall. I have a shimmer. I don't use that for lead vocals a lot, but for background vocals, it could be cool. Mono delay, stereo delay short, and stereo delay long. And then the vocal tracks go to the vocal stem. And the background vocals, they look, they only have a sub with some reverb sends on them. And on that, I have a channel EQ, a deesser, a compressor, channel strip, and sugar. I often use different plugins on my tracks and on my subs, but this gives me a starting point. Do I need, wow, that was a lot of bass on the background vocals, I can adjust it quickly. Oh, I need to compress that background vocal more, I can do that easily. Then I might change the compressor, because I find that another compressor will do the job better, but I have at least a starting point so I can get the mix going quickly, because the quicker I can work, the more I can concentrate on the music instead of the technical stuff. And that's why I have a template. As I told you, I have some stereo tracks all ready to go. I have percussion, I have stereo acoustic, stereo electric a few, piano, B3, some synth tracks, violin one, two, viola, shelly and basses, if I have a string orchestra for example. That is sort of my template. If you want to see me import tracks into my template and how I assign the tracks to work in my template, let me know in the comments and I will do a video about that. But this video is complicated enough as it is. Complicated in Swedish is komplicerad. Komplicerad. Until next time, roger that.